Hello everyone. Today I want to show you a few ways to get your digital supplies off your computer and printed using a standard at home printer. Now this tutorial that I'm going to show you assumes that you have installed both the full version of Photoshop and Adobe Bridge. If you are using Photoshop versions CS6 and below, then Adobe Bridge will install automatically. If you're using Photoshop Creative Cloud or CC, Bridge must be downloaded separately. So what is Adobe Bridge? Well, Bridge is a very useful software that makes it very easy to organize and manage all your photos. If you are using a PC, then Bridge is the equivalent to the Windows Explorer. And if you're using a Mac, then Bridge is equivalent to the Finder window. Now, I'm also going to assume that you've already downloaded and unzipped your products. For me, when I um, purchase my products, I click on the um, download button and it automatically goes into my downloads folder and it's already unzipped. The zipped file goes into my trash bin and then I'm left with the folder with the contents of what I just purchased. So now let's launch Adobe Bridge, the application. Um, and when you launch Adobe Bridge for the very first time, you are going to be in the default Essentials view. There are many views that you can switch Adobe Bridge to. However, for the purposes of just printing products at home, this default view is, is all that you will need. Um, you're going to notice that Adobe Bridge launches and there are three sides to your screen. So on the very left side of the screen, there is the folder tree. The folder tree allows you to navigate to wherever your files are located on your computer. So again, this is exactly the same way you would navigate using Windows Explorer. In the middle of your screen is the content area which shows you all of the folders that contain your products. So I have tons of Crafty Button Design products. Um, for this tutorial I'm going to show you the Metamorphosis collection, the Candy Candy Cotton Collection and the Home Collection. And then on the third side or the ultimate right side of your screen you will see the preview pane. Now this shows you a larger thumbnail of any of the individual items that you're going to select um, in the middle content area. So let's get ready to print some um, elements that we have from the Metamorphosis Butterfly folder. So I'm just going to go down to the folder where I know the supplies are located. Now this is a gorgeous set of butterflies. Um, you have some individual butterflies and then you have some that are um, in a flare button and they're just really gorgeous and, and lots of bright colors. So the first thing you want to do is select an image. As soon as you select an image, you'll see that I selected the um, one butterfly here and you'll see it on the right, a larger thumbnail on the right in the preview pane. However, um, Adobe Bridge allows you to select multiple images really quickly and all you have to do is select the first image, you click on the first image, hold down the shift key and then you hover over the last image that you want in the selection, in the group of selections, you click on it and then you will automatically have a range of images. And then you'll notice on the preview pane, um, all the images that are selected are in the preview pane. You might have to scroll down depending on you know how much of your screen real estate is being taken. You might have to scroll down to see the rest of the butterflies or images that you selected, but that's just fine. They're all there. So in order to be able to print all of these items really quickly, because I'm working on an art journal, I know I wanted to have several butterflies, in order to be able to print in Photoshop really easily and quickly, you go to the Tools menu, then you go to Photoshop, and then you select Contact Sheet 2. And what's going to happen next is that you're going to have an open dialog window. Now it's very important to follow the steps because this dialog window is how you're going to tell Photoshop you want all of these images that you selected to end up on one sheet of standard US letter size paper. So for the settings that we need to change, 
you want to make sure that number one you can choose your image um, measurement for me I'm more comfortable with the US measurement so I'm gonna keep it on inches but you have other options you just click on the drop down we want to make it 11 as the width and eight and a half as the height now this is going to be a landscape sheet of paper when you see it in Photoshop you can change it to a portrait sheet of paper so you could make the width eight and a half and the height 11 my preference is 11 by eight and a half because I want to see it in landscape mode as opposed to portrait you want to keep it as 300 um, pixels per inch resolution resolution because that's going to give you the best quality image you can keep the default um, RGB color default 8-bit is fine the color profile if it's not already selected I like to choose Adobe RGB 1998 now the next thing you want to do is you always want to uncheck flatten all layers you never want to check this um, the reason being is that you want all your layers to be editable and I'll show you that more when we um, click OK and it goes into Photoshop next you just want to make sure that you leave um, auto spacing on so you want that checked it doesn't matter the placement if you do a cross first or down first that you can leave as the default the columns and the rows I'm choosing three columns and three rows however this is something you can play with and you can change these numbers and I'll show you when I select a different set of elements what happens if I change the columns to a different number next optional to rotate for best fit you can check it or uncheck it next you always want to uncheck use file name as caption we don't need file names for this particular thing that we're doing here and when you're done you click OK after you click OK if you're on a PC your hour your mouse will turn into an hourglass which means that the computer is working and if you're on a Mac then you'll see the color wheel which means that the computer is working that's okay don't panic Photoshop is gonna look wonky it's gonna be rendering a bunch of images you're gonna see things flashing on the screen it's absolutely okay it's doing its job based on the criteria that we just put in that dialog box so once it's all done Photoshop will insert all the images that you told it to from the butterflies onto one single sheet and it's in landscape mode so you can see it's a wider view and that's why I prefer landscape but again you can change it to a portrait mode that's absolutely fine if we had more images we would have multiple sheets so here we have one sheet because we picked nine images and those nine images all fit so but if you had more if you had 14 15 if you chose all the images you would have multiple sheets on your screen so now we have all our butterflies on our screen what if we want to resize those images what if one butterfly is you know you want it smaller or larger well it's very easy what you will see on your screen you are now in Photoshop Photoshop works by allowing you on the right to manipulate the layers the layers panel on the right is where all of your images are essentially sitting your the layers panel allows you to edit your images and that's exactly where you see all the thumbnails so any particular image that you want to resize first you would select the thumbnail on the right or you can click on it with your mouse button you can click on the actual image in the middle of your screen when you are changing the size of an image you always want to hold down your shift key and this is a full version of Photoshop you hold down the shift key and then you click your mouse button and you either drag down or drag up to resize and you always use the corner handles you don't want to use the side handles the reason being is Photoshop is locking the aspect ratio of that image so that means that your image will not be distorted as you are resizing it up or resizing it down now what if you want to resize all of the images or multiple images at the same time Photoshop allows you to do that again using the layers panel the layers panel the first thing you would do was select the first thumbnail and then you hold down your shift key and you go to the bottom or the last thumbnail in the range that you want to select and you would click and it will select 
all of the images. So now you see the bounding box around the entire sheet. And once again, you would hold down your shift key, click on your mouse button, and you can resize that by dragging down or dragging up to make all of the images um, change in size. And then you can click in any of the images and move it on the sheet to reposition that um, in the center of your page. So now you're ready to print. Now you can go to File Print. A dialog box will open based on your printer settings. So you want to make sure you change the appropriate settings such as page size, orientation, your print quality, and color handling. Now what you see on my screen is going to be different because I'm using a Canon printer. If you're not using a Canon printer, you're using HP, Epson, your printer settings dialog will be different. But what you can do is make sure that number one the page size you want to make sure that you have chosen eight and a half by eleven on your printer before you hit it to print you want to make sure that you change the orientation again mine is in landscape if yours is in portrait or if it's not in landscape and you need it to be in landscape you want to make sure you click on the button you want to make sure that you change the print quality. For me, my printer is going to feed in a rear tray and I want to make sure that I choose that I have the rear tray setting and I want to choose that the image quality should be high or the print quality should be high. Again, check with your printer, check with your settings um, on your individual at home computer because it's going to be different. In this dialog box, you will also see a question about color management. It's in the centermost um, portion of the dialog box. You want to choose Photoshop manages the colors because this document has already been rendered in Photoshop. The gorgeous colors that you see on the screen is what you want your printer to mimic as close as possible. So if the default is that the um, printer manages the colors, you just want to change it to Photoshop manages the color. For me, the paper that I'm using came with instructions on what to change as far as the printer profile. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to choose RR Paper Matte because that's the instructions with the particular paper that I'm using. If you are just using regular printer paper, don't worry about this. Leave the default that comes with your printer settings. If you buy pres presentation paper, which is what I do for printing the, the best quality um, images, I typically buy via stone or I buy the Epson brand presentation paper. These papers are a little bit heavier than your normal um, typing paper and it's bright white. It's 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 um, going to give you the best image quality. But if that's not a concern of yours or you just want to print using the paper you have at home, that's absolutely fine. So next, you would just click on the print button and you're done. You would just wait for your image to come out of your printer. Now that we've learned how to print digital elements, we're going to go in and print 12 by 12 paper. So from Adobe Bridge, you want to navigate to the folder where your digital papers are and then you choose one of your papers. You want to select File and then Open. So Photoshop will become the active program running on your desktop with the paper that you've just selected. Next you want to go to the Image menu and scroll down to Image Size. A new dialog box will open asking you to change the size of the paper and you want to change the width to eight and a half you want to change the height to eleven you want to leave the resolution as three hundred pixels per inch you also want to make sure that you deselect the link icon to the left in between width and height you want to make sure that the resample is checked and you click OK and now Photoshop will resize your pa paper and you should have an eight and a half by eleven size sheet of paper that you can print. And for printing, you just follow the same steps that we just that were just shown. So I hope this tutorial was helpful, and you've learned how to print digital elements and papers using your printer at home.